This is the full MRTV review of the HP Reverb. Is this your next VR headset upgrade? Find out now because all of the details are coming up. Hi and welcome to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang. And if this is your first time here, and if you're just as excited about VR and AR as me, then subscribe now and click on the bell button so don't miss anything. This here is the brand new HP Reverb VR headset. And all of you are wondering, is it worth it? It's $600 asking price. And I can tell you right away, yes, it is. But let's directly go into the details. The HP Reverb is HP's brand new VR headset and this one is going to turn some heads. The star of the show is without a doubt the very high 2160 times 2160 pixel per eye resolution. Virtual worlds have never looked better than in this headset. Combined with a design that brings together the best of the original Oculus Rift and the Oculus Go, the HP Reverb is a very comfortable headset that will not only appeal to the enterprise market but also to VR enthusiasts and simulator fans who are looking for the next real upgrade to their existing setup. Despite a few flaws that I will address later in this review, at $600 the HP Reverb is the clear recommendation for anyone who wants the sharpest picture that is available in VR today. Despite its looks, the HP Reverb belongs to the Windows Mixed Reality line of VR headsets. However, as opposed to the very first generation of WinMR headsets, this time HP developed all the components by themselves instead of relying on Microsoft's run-of-the-mill components. The Reverb features custom Fresnel lenses that the company claims to allow for a wider 140 degrees field of view. Of course, the star of the show, the two high resolution 2K times 2K pixel per eye LCD displays that with 2.89 inch are rather small as compared to the competition and therefore allow for an even higher pixel density. Unfortunately, HP chose not to include manual IPD adjustment, even though they could have done so. When I asked for the reason, I was told that HP tried to reduce weight and make the headset as easy to use as possible and that the big sweet spot would make up for it. The Reverb comes with the standard Windows MR controllers that can only be described as mediocre when compared to the Oculus Touch or Valve Index controllers. The same two camera inside out tracking is at play here that works great for 6 degrees of freedom head tracking and is good enough for the vast majority of games when it comes to the controller tracking. However, in 2019 it does feel kind of outdated when compared to the Oculus inside out tracking of the Rift S and Quest featuring 5 and 4 cameras respectively. Let's have a look at the most exciting parts of the headset now. The high resolution displays, the custom made lenses and the claimed higher FOV. The high resolution panels truly keep the promise of delivering lifelike VR like never seen before. Virtual worlds simply look stunning. VR enthusiasts that look for a true upgrade in terms of resolution and detail look no further. The HP Reverb will make your X-Plane 11 DCS Project Cars 2 sessions look as good as on no other device right now, period. I was truly amazed when I first started X-Plane 11 and sat in that Cessna. The cockpit looked as real as if I was truly sitting in that plane. It was mind-boggling. I could read all gauges with ease and the visual quality was near photorealistic. But it's not only simulation games that look better. Every single game that I threw at the reverb just made me feel surprised about how good VR can actually look in 2019. Also, text is way more legible than in any other headset at the moment and I can understand that HP actually targets enterprise clients with the HP reverb. We're getting close to monitor quality here and there will be cases where customers will use this headset to work on several virtual screens or meet colleagues in VR environments to manipulate 3D product models. When I first got the reverb though, I nearly directly wrote it off. I started the cliff house and one flaw directly became apparent. Mura. For those of you who have never heard about Mura, it is a panel problem that results in pixels not displaying the exact same color throughout the display. Some areas are brighter and some areas are darker than others. 
Imagine sitting in a car and looking through a windshield that had not been cleaned in weeks. No matter what you see outside, the same areas will look dirty and you wish you could simply clean the windshield. Unfortunately, the HP reverb panels do suffer from Mura and that is a problem that cannot be fixed by software updates. Mura will be visible in bright scenes with large areas of the same color, just like in the Windows Cliff House. However, once I actually started to play, my worries faded because the impact of Mura during gameplay is negligible and you don't see it at all and it didn't affect me at all. Of course, I wish it was not there in the first place, but I suppose HP had to compromise when sourcing panels and trying to achieve a sub $600 asking price for a headset that truly is at the cutting edge of VR display technology right now. For me, the bump in resolution more than made up for the occasional Mura in bright and uniform color scenes. Now another concern I had was the panel display technology. HP is using LCD panels, which seems to be a trend in 2019. Both Rift S as well as Valve Index sport LCD panels, albeit not as high in resolution as the HP panels. Blacks are often not as pitch black in LCD panels as compared to their OLED counterparts often resulting in grayish colors and not real blacks. I'm glad to let you know that my concerns were unfounded in this case. Blacks look surprisingly good and even Elite Dangerous fans will be able to enjoy space in the HP reverb. Blacks still are not as great as in OLED panels, but come very close. If you don't AB compare the panels next to each other, I do not think anyone would even complain here. On top of that, you will get a 90Hz refresh rate and an RGB stripe matrix pixel structure that results in 50% more subpixels as compared to older displays with the same resolution, a higher fill factor and therefore less SDE. The panels look so great actually that it's tough to see individual pixels. We have not quite yet reached a resolution where you would not be able to see any pixels at all anymore, but you really have to concentrate if you want to make out individual pixels. The Samsung Odyssey Plus achieved this with an optical filter that would hide the areas between pixels. The HP Reverb does not need such tricks because there are simply so many subpixels that SDE is a thing of the past. Therefore, even though the Samsung Odyssey Plus still boasts an impressive picture quality, the HP Reverb is noticeably sharper and the new benchmark when it comes to VR displays with the standard FOV. Talking about FOV, now what about that claim of a wider 140 degrees field of view of the HP Reverb? Now that is truly a mystery to me and I can just write it off as marketing speak because there's truly not a higher FOV in this headset as compared to the standard FOV headsets that are on the market right now like Rift, Vive and Samsung Odyssey. Actually, if you compare it side by side with, for example, the Samsung Odyssey, the HP Reverb will actually have a smaller FOV than the Samsung Odyssey. So I truly don't get that claim to 140 degrees FOV. Getting as close as possible to the lenses to maximize FOV actually revealed another flaw though. The panels are so small as compared to the competition that you will see the edges of the display when you either get too close to the lenses or if you do not look at them perfectly straight ahead. And unfortunately, the straps are set up in a way that makes this quite likely. If you simply wear the headset in its most comfortable position, you would look at the displays at an angle that will reveal the bottom edge of the displays. In my opinion, HP should redesign that part of the headset that would allow it to tilt up the way that it does. Being able to see the edges in VR will kill immersion immediately, at least for me. This problem can easily be avoided though by wearing the headset correctly, but in my opinion, you should not even be able to wear it at a wrong angle in the first place and therefore so easily revealing the bottom edges of the displays. The lenses, however, are great and there's nothing to complain about. These are custom-made Fresnel lenses that are not plagued by god rays at all and very much remind me of the fantastic Oculus Go, Quest and Rift S lenses. 
My only gripe here is that HP did not build in a manual IPD adjustment to cater for people that have a very small or very large IPD. HP says that anyone with an IPD of 63 plus minus 8 millimeters can comfortably use the headset thanks to a large sweet spot. The sweet spot is indeed bigger than for example its direct competitor, the Samsung Odyssey Plus, but I still would not call it a revelation as compared to other headsets. As mentioned above, the design of the HP Reverb reminds us of the original Oculus Rift. If you would have shown an unsuspecting VR enthusiast the Rift S and the HP Reverb without their respective branding a couple of months ago, I'm pretty sure the Rift S would have been mistaken for the Windows MR headset. For the Reverb, you can tell it was developed with comfort and ease of use in mind. It is surprisingly small, also thanks to the tiny displays and weighs less than 500 grams. Since it follows the original Rift design, it is worn like a baseball cap rather than going for the Halo style of design. I normally prefer the latter, but I must confess that HP has done a fantastic job here. The reverb is incredibly comfortable and I have no doubts that it can be worn for hours at a time without problems. The headset is the perfect combination between original Rift for its strap design and the Oculus Go for the face padding. Just like the Go, the Reverb's facial mask completely consists of one big piece of cloth-like material. And just like the Go, you could completely take it off the headset, clean it and put it back in or go for a third-party solution. It feels just as comfortable as the Go version since exactly the same material is being used here. I'm reviewing the consumer version by the way, the $50 more expensive Pro version comes with a different face mask that consists of a material that you could more easily wipe clean if more than one person is using the device. It also comes with one additional shorter cable to connect the headset with a backpack computer. Speaking of cables, HP thankfully allows you to exchange cables since the main cable is not attached to the device itself but rather connects to a headset connection. In the box, you will find a 3.5 meters long cable that splits apart into USB 3.0 and DisplayPort 1.3. HP even puts a mini DP 2DP adapter into the box so that laptop users can directly use the headset without having to buy this adapter themselves. Well done, HP. The HP Reverb comes with included headphones that can be adjusted in position to fit everyone's ear position. They feel comfortable on the ears and pack a punch when playing games. From a quality perspective, they can easily compete with the headphones supplied with the original Rift and the Samsung Odyssey headphones. People who prefer to use their own headphones will like that you could easily detach the headphones and connect your own ones via the built-in 3.5mm headphone jack. It is refreshing to see that HP sticks to the good old standard headphone solution instead of following Oculus with their audio pipe that sacrifices bass and allows other people to listen in. High resolution comes at the cost of performance since simply more pixels have to be driven by the GPU. I was worried that my GDX 1080 Ti would not be up for the task at all, even though HP stated the minimum requirement would be a GDX 1080. I was pleasantly surprised that my graphics card had no problems whatsoever though. Here are some benchmarks to give you an idea. Arizona Sunshine. 200% super sampling, 90 frames per second. Doom VFR, 200% super sampling, 90 frames per second. Skyrim, 200% super sampling, high quality, no mods, 90 frames per second. Raw data, 200% super sampling, 85 frames per second. Project Cars 2, 132% super sampling, track details high, shadow on, 88 frames per second. DCS, 200% super sampling, textures high, 47 frames per second. Xplain 11, 150% super sampling, textures high, 35 frames per second. Xplain 11, 100% super sampling, textures high, 42 frames per second. Assetto Corsa, 
200% super sampling, high quality, 73 frames per second. For the flight simulators, I could have gotten more FPS if I had lowered all the textures and reduced super sampling. That is for sure. But I simply wanted to see at what quality settings those games are still playable. People with a high-end 2080 Ti graphics card will have a blast. But still, with the GDX 1080 Ti, you will have a great time with the HP Reverb. The HP Reverb is an amazing headset that pushes the envelope in terms of visual quality in VR. Games at 2K times 2K pixels per eye resolution simply look stunning. And text is as readable as never before in VR. The Reverb makes standard resolution headsets truly look dated in comparison. The headset is not without its flaws though. Mura is clearly visible in bright homochromatic scenes and the Windows Mixed Reality Controller tracking is in need for a serious update, even though it is still good enough for most use cases. Despite those flaws though, the amazing visuals combined with the high build quality, supreme comfort and reasonable $600 asking price make the HP Reverb a no-brainer for enterprise customers that are looking for the sharpest VR headset on the market. But also VR enthusiasts and VR gamers that are looking for a real upgrade to their existing systems will want to get a hold of the HP Reverb in order to see how beautiful virtual worlds can look like in 2019 already. So what's left to say? Well, 2019 turns out to be an amazing year for VR and HP has done a remarkable job of making themselves relevant in this industry both for enterprise and consumer clients. The next goal will be to bring this kind of visual fidelity to a wide FOV headset with eye tracking and better controllers. However, at this moment in time, I'm pretty happy with where we are. And that's it for the full MRTV review of the HP Reverb. For the full written review with many more through the lens shots, please go to mrtv.co. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and of course, if you do not want to miss any more content like this, please subscribe to this channel. And I'm now looking forward to see you in the next episode. However, once I actually started to play games, my worries faded because the impact of Mura in games is negligible. Neg 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 neg